Our kidneys are busy doing many tasks. They are constantly removing waste products from the blood and balancing the salts, acid, and water levels of our body. They work with the brain and heart to control our blood pressure. They help manage vitamin D and calcium to keep our bones strong and help in the process of making new blood cells. Many things can damage the kidneys. When the damage is fast and sudden, it's called acute kidney injury. This can become a serious problem and needs quick attention. The buildup of acid, chemicals, and waste can be very dangerous. And if the damage is not treated, it can lead to chronic or permanent kidney failure. So it's important for us to know, what causes acute kidney injury? What are its symptoms? How is it diagnosed? And how can we prevent and treat it? Let's ask Dr. Smart about it. Hi, I am Dr. S. from the Smart Clinic. Let's talk about acute kidney injury today. Dr. S., what causes kidney failure? Our kidneys are made of millions of tiny tubes called nephrons. These are like filtration plants that clean the blood and maintain the right levels of fluid, acid, and salts for our body. Different things can damage the nephrons and kidneys. The injury can be sudden, which is called acute kidney injury, or AKI, or it can be slow and over time causing chronic kidney disease, or CKD, like from diabetes or high blood pressure. In the case of acute kidney injury, there are many possible reasons for kidney damage. In simple terms, the injury can happen in three ways. One, if there is not enough oxygen or blood reaching the kidney. Two, direct damage to the kidney. Or three, blockage in the urinary drainage system. Now, let's see some examples of each type. First are conditions in which the kidneys don't get enough blood or oxygen. This can happen when the fluid level in the body or the blood pressure is dangerously low. For example, in severe dehydration, like with intense sweating with not enough water intake, or in cases of severe diarrhea and vomiting. Heart failure or severe infections, such as with sepsis, can also cause blood pressure low enough to damage the kidneys. The second type of injuries damage the kidneys directly. This can be from medicines or other substances that can be toxic to the kidneys. So it's important for you to know what the potential side effects of your medicines are and how to monitor them. A common cause of direct kidney damage is the excessive use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAID pain medicines. Some herbal medicines and supplements may also cause kidney injury. Consult with your doctor when starting new medicines. Direct damage to the kidneys can also happen because of autoimmune diseases like lupus or due to certain infections. The third type of problems are related to a blockage in the urinary tubes, which causes back pressure and damages the kidneys. This can be from kidney stones stuck in the ureter or a tumor or mass pressing on the ureter. Other causes can be related to urine retention problems due to bladder dysfunction or a large prostate gland. If acute kidney injury is identified early and treated, there is a chance for recovery back to normal. Depending on the cause of injury and its duration, at times the damage may not recover completely, and in some cases it may not recover at all, causing chronic kidney disease. Dr. S., what are the symptoms of acute kidney failure, and how is it diagnosed? The symptoms of kidney failure can be different depending on what caused the kidney injury and how severe the damage is. Symptoms can include fatigue, weakness, confusion, being too sleepy or somnolent, having trouble with passing urine, making less urine, having a dark color of urine, nausea, or shortness of breath. Many times, the symptoms may only show when the damage is severe. Early recognition and management is essential to prevent life-threatening complications and long-term damage. A diagnosis of acute kidney injury is made based on the results of blood tests. A renal function test helps us check the level of creatinine and urea, or BUN, in the blood. A high level indicates that kidneys are not clearing the blood appropriately. 
We also check for the levels of potassium, acid, sodium, phosphate, and other chemicals to guide the treatment. If you are diagnosed with acute kidney injury, your doctors may ask you many questions to try and determine the cause. These questions might include, what medical conditions do you have? What medicines do you take? Did you start any new medicines, substances, or supplements? How much urine are you making? Do you have abdominal pain? Or any difficulty in passing urine? How much water have you been drinking? Or any other new symptoms that you might have experienced recently? Based on the history and blood test results, further tests are usually needed. These may include more blood tests, urine tests, an ultrasound, or a CT scan of the abdomen. These tests will guide the treatment plan for your condition. In rare cases, a biopsy of the kidney may also be needed for diagnosing the cause of kidney injury. Dr. S, how is acute kidney failure treated? When treating acute kidney injury, first we quickly address the life-threatening problems if these are present. These can be due to high potassium, high acid, or urea levels in the blood. People with acute kidney injury can also have very low or very high blood pressures. These treatments usually require IV medicines and at times urgent dialysis. Dialysis is a process in which the blood is cleared of wastes and acids using a machine and an IV catheter. It also helps fix the electrolytes quickly. If the acute kidney injury is not urgently dangerous, then we focus on the treatment based on the cause. Some people may need IV fluids for dehydration. Some may need procedures to remove the blockage in urine tubes. Some may need to stop using medicines or substances that led to the damage. And for some, we may need other medicines to treat their condition. The recovery after an acute kidney injury varies in different situations. At times, the recovery is swift with a rapid return to baseline function. Many times, the recovery is slow and needs monitoring and close checkups. In some cases, the kidneys do not recover back or the recovery is incomplete. Keep a close follow-up with your doctors and be careful to avoid things that can damage the kidneys any further. Stay healthy and help others stay healthy. Share this video with others so they can also learn about this common health problem.